Welcome to The Debrief, where we talk with the Washington Examiner's top journalists about the headlines they're covering this week and where the story is going next. I'm Sarah Westwood, and I'm here today with Editor-in-Chief Hugo Gurdon. And Hugo, you wrote a column this week about how, you know, back in 2016 when then-President Donald Trump won the election, there were these expectations that he would change in office. And now there's a discussion about whether he did, in fact, really change uh, upon taking office. What do you think about that? No, argument? no, I, th I think that he, he, he absolutely did not. I think that was one of the myths that um, people sort of persuaded themselves with when he came to office. They thought that some of the rough edges and uh, some of his, his bullying and uh, vulgarity and things like that would, would go away. And none of those things changed. But the point that I wanted to make in the column that I wrote is that just because uh, his worst faults have not gone away doesn't mean to say he's not a changed man. What the election that we've just been through, the midterm election, showed is that he's now a loser. You know, he's lost, actually, he, he, in the 2018, uh, the Democrats retook, the, retook Congress. You could say that that's what generally happens to a president in the first term, uh, the midterms in the middle of his first, first term of office. But then he lost in 2020, and now in 2022, the candidates that he endorsed underperformed the rest of the Republican Party. And the party as a whole underperformed largely because uh, he is still a kind of cloud hanging over the party. So the point that I wanted to make is that, you know, he has, he, ha he is now very much a sort of devalued president. And the, he, the value of his endorsement has fallen, um, you know, as fast as a crypto exchange <laughs> run by Sam Bankman Free. So, you know, previously a lot of elected R's, even ones who were Republicans who were tired of the shenanigans that Donald Trump has been pulling on the national stage, maybe didn't feel safe criticizing him openly because they were afraid of alienating yeah. his supporters. Do you think some of that fear might be removed now? A absolutely. I think that that fear is evaporating really fast. I think that it was always unfair at and wide of the mark to ac accuse most of the Republicans who didn't openly criticize uh, Trump of sort of cowardice and lack of principle. Certainly that would have been the case with some of them. But uh, for a lot of them, and certainly uh, leaders up on Capitol Hill with whom I have spoken, it was a tactical and strategic decision. They wanted to get past Trump. They really wanted to get past Trump. But at the same time, they didn't want to alienate his supporters. And that was a reasonable calculation that if you alienate his supporters, you cede control of Washington to radical Democrats. And they didn't want to do that. They want to win, and they would like to win without Trump. Now, the, va the, the, the cost of crossing Trump and the value of his endorsement has radically changed after these elections. And, uh, and you know, both Republicans and his critics on the left are, are, are noticing that almost overnight the price of crossing Donald Trump has entirely changed and that there are uh, the, the, the real value, the thing that, that voters really want uh, is government that listens to their uh, concerns, that focuses on the things that they're interested in, which is why really effective governors like DeSantis and DeWine uh, and, and, and several others did so well when candidates endorsed by Trump absolutely fail. Is there a risk, though, that so many Republicans will recognize that the price of, of crossing Donald Trump has, has lowered so much that too many will jump into the race and sort of dilute that anti-Trump sentiment in the party and, and clear him a path? Well, there is always a danger that I mean, it, it, one cannot rule out the possibility of him winning the nomination again, which um, should give people shudders. But he... It, uh, his ability to do that, I think, is much weakened. And it isn't just weakened by the fact that his, you know, he, he did so badly or his candidates did so badly. But then he came out with his big announcement of a, 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 of a run, mm -hmm. which was so lackluster and so lacking in, 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 in appeal that even Jeb Bush tweeted that it lacked energy. <laughs> and, and, you know, it, it, he doesn't look like somebody who really wants to be doing this. Uh, uh, He's got more than two years, or almost exactly two years, till the next election, and uh, and there's a sort of there's a sense of people being already tired of it. So, um, yes, there's a danger that uh, that that many people could enter. He could still win, um, uh, and that will be something that the Republican Republican Party 
um, will obviously want to try and avoid, or at least a, a very substantial proportion of them will want to try and avoid. Um, it's a danger which will hang over them until he's beaten. Well, Hugo, thank you so much for being here today. Thank you. You can get more writing from Hugo and the rest of the commentary team at WashingtonExaminer.com.